trickle-down theory. There have been many economic theories over the centuries, accompanied by controversies among different schools of economists. But one of the most politically prominent economic theories today is one that has never existed among economists, the trickle-down theory. People who are politically committed to policies of redistributing income and who tend to emphasize the conflicts between business and labor rather than their mutual interdependence often accuse those opposed to them of believing that benefits must be given to the wealthy in general or to business in particular in order that these benefits will eventually trickle down to the masses of ordinary people. But no recognized economist of any school of thought has ever had any such theory or made any such proposal. It is a straw man. It cannot be found in even the most voluminous and learned histories of economic theories. Proposals to reduce taxes on capital gains, for example, are often opposed politically by saying that those who make such proposals believe in a trickle-down theory of economics. In reality, Economic processes work in the directly opposite way from that depicted by those who imagine that profits first benefit business owners and that benefits only belatedly trickle down to workers. When an investment is made, whether to build a railroad or to open a new restaurant, the first money is spent hiring people to do the work. Without that, nothing happens. Even when one person decides to operate a store or a hamburger stand without employees, that person must first pay somebody to deliver the goods that are going to be sold. Money goes out first to pay expenses, and then comes back as profits later, if at all. The high rate of failure of new businesses makes painfully clear that there is nothing inevitable about the money coming back. Even with successful and well-established businesses, Years may elapse between the initial investment and the return of earnings. From the time when an oil company begins spending money to explore for petroleum to the time when the first gasoline resulting from that exploration comes out of a pump at a filling station, a decade may have passed. In the meantime, all sorts of employees have been paid, geologists, engineers, refinery workers, truck drivers. It is only afterwards that profits begin coming in. Only then are there any capital gains to tax. The real effect of a reduction in the capital gains tax is that it opens the prospect of greater future net profits and thereby provides incentives to make current investments. Nor is the oil industry unique. No one who begins publishing a newspaper expects to make a profit or even break even during the first year or two, but reporters and other members of the newspaper staff expect to be paid every payday, even while the paper shows only red ink on the bottom line. Amazon.com began operating in 1994, but its first profits did not appear until the last quarter of 2001, after the company lost a total of $2.8 billion over the years. Even a phenomenally successful enterprise like the McDonald's restaurant chain ran up millions of dollars in debts for years before it saw the first dollar of profit. Indeed, it teetered on the brink of bankruptcy more than once in its early years. But the people behind the counter selling hamburgers were paid regularly all that time. In short, the sequence of payments is directly the opposite of what is assumed by those who talk about a trickle-down theory. The workers must be paid first, and then the profits flow upward later, if at all.